this is the fourth or perhaps the fifth edition you you gave me the honor to give conclusive remarks um, I don't take it for granted and you are not forced to give me this honor for the other 10 years uh, till the moment <laughs> where I will celebrate the 40th uh, anniversary. We speak about CBDP, and CBDP means uh, Paul, means uh, Rosamunde, means Dara, means the old team uh, focusing on this fantastic conference, and as well, Football players, when they score, do. I would like to hear now a big applause for this wonderful team. <laughs> Paul, it is safe to say that the market for privacy and technology uh, events in Brussels is saturated. CPDP continues to defy the laws of physics, reaching this year a maximum capacity of less than 1,250 registrations. So you may start competing with me um, since I got 1,446 uh, participants at the last uh, edition of Privacy and Data Protection Commissioners. You are entitled to feel very, very proud. For those wanting to, wanting to escape from the polar vortex over much Middle America and the Eurasian uh, landmass, there can be no better refuge than CPDP. The first day of this conference uh, coincided with an unusual milestone spotted by clever men on Twitter. The 30th of January this year was precisely 12,719 days after the cold, bright day in April at the beginning of George Orwell's 1984. And this is precisely the same amount of time between the publication of the novel in 1949 and the date it was set. So the real 1984 is now more distant from us in the past, then the dystopian 1984 was for Orwell in the future. And the appalling vision of 1984 may have mobilized many people in this room to fight to safeguard civil liberties in the face of technological change. But the digital reality this year, 2019, is very different from the science fiction of the first half of the 20th century. We just have the privilege of listening, I would say, Professor Zuboff, but let me say Shoshana, both open and close this, uh, this event. Shoshana is now finally getting universal recognition as a profound, eloquent, and erudite prophet of our time, a reputation you fully deserve. And your overall diagnosis of 2019 is not Orwell's techno-totalitarianism. And although there are some parts of the world which indeed do labor under similarly oppressive regime, you point to the constant mining of people, uh, their thoughts and relationship in order to predict and shape their future behavior. And this mind data is analyzed, as you say, and combined to become knowledge. Data inferred to data, you said. So knowledge becomes the power to decide what is true and what is not true. And this power is increasingly, notwithstanding legal rules, concentrated in few hands like never before. Luckily, in countries which are democratic countries, what would happen then in the next future. And as a result, we don't have machine learning to be more intelligent than people as imagined by Shifai novels and film, but we do have people 
who are increasingly expected to think and operate like machines. This digital future was not inevitable. And continuing on this trajectory is not inevitable either, even if many policymakers and investors assume that it is. And this is the delusion that lies behind the, let's say, contention that updated EU rules on the confidentiality of communications, namely e-privacy, must be opposed because they stand in the way of artificial intelligence. In fact, this digital future has taken less than two decades to establish itself, and it cannot just as easily unravel and be replaced by a model which is more sustainable, more just, more democratic. CPDP this year has rightly chosen the theme of democracy. This is essential in a year where Europe is approaching elections, also in 13 member states. And therefore, we, we should consider how our approach, our personality is datafied in a way which perhaps affect a lot of individuals. The dominant business model, the mythology around connecting everyone and everything, we would like to help you to socializing. It's a sort of a fetishization of big data and artificial intelligence is now losing its shine. My impression is that people are waking up to the risk posed by rampant and unaccountable data practices to social cohesion and basic values like democracy. We are realizing that privacy is not important to us uh, just as individuals. Privacy is a social good. Respect for private space is increasingly necessary for freedom of expression, which means that privacy becomes every single day more essential for democracy. And this is why in 10 days uh, from today, the European Data Protection Supervisor will host in Brussels an important event on the 11th of February. It's a workshop, or you may say a conference, on the multiple elections taking place this year and what data protection authorities and others need to do to expose and tackle manipulation in the digital space. Because, dear colleagues, uh, and friends, 30 years since the fall of the war burning wall, our political discourse have moved into wallet gardens, digital chicken. And these wallet gardens are not really the public sphere, but rather unaccountable private spaces where we are fully monitored and served information according to a, log a logic of an unclear, non-transparent algorithms. Democracy, Paul, is after all not only voting. Democracy means the freedom to freely participate in a discussion without being instrumentalized and monitored. You are aware about the fine applied today by UK ICO in a case where uh, data were improperly used by an insurance company and by a political movement, uh, the one interested for uh, one solution to the Brexit. Democracy is the freedom to receive information from a plurality of sources. Democracy means the right to be informed, the right to inform, and everyone, without any discrimination in terms of residence and nationality, is entitled to express his or himself without they every move every thought, every transaction being captured and marshaled to a perfect, a hidden profile. If you go and buy in a shop a newspaper, perhaps it's a standard newspaper or it would be an oriented newspaper, in which case only the news uh, agent can observe and infer your political tendencies, if any. Now, thanks to programmatic advertising, this sensitive information is pumped out 
to hundreds and hundreds of obscure agents in a sort of a Lumascape. They know what you read, which article you read, what you don't read. So this is a challenge for data protection authorities. Uh, we have been thinking about this for a long time. And back in 2005, I drafted this uh, resolution at the Montreux International Edition of the uh, Conference of Privacy Data Protection Commissions. We adopted at that time an important resolution on political propaganda and personal data processing. 14 years after, this is a still valid document, although technologies are, are evolving. And now data protection authorities are raising their game as various panels, thank you for focusing this year on democracy, this week have made clear data protection and privacy are vital to securing trusts in, in elections. And data security also is essential for elections to deliver a winner and to convince the loser of the fairness of the outcome. In the words of Bruce Schneider, we cannot place democracy at the mercy of the vulnerabilities of computers, which in case of the elections are by nature hackable, unreliable, or not private, or all three. The risk of failures in democratic processes are still too high, which is why, for instance, in 2017, the Dutch government decided to return to counting all ballots by hand to prevent the impression about possible frauds. So let us, however, try to move beyond the language of risks and dystopian nightmares. It's a terrific week, it has been a terrific week, and we should end with a call for positive action, like Paul. On this day, 1st of February, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln signed the well-known 13 amendments to the United States Convention. And this amendment declared unconstitutional all slavery and involuntary, involuntary servitude. Subsequent case law interpreted this amendment as prohibiting control by which the personal service of one man is disposed or coerced for another benefits. And this principle in Europe is now echoed by Article 5 of the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. And in recent years, the European Union has taken important steps to prohibit, listen for a second, the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of forms of coercion or fraud, deception, of the abuse of power, or of a position of vulnerability for the purpose of exploitation. These words are taken by the 2011 anti-human traffic, direct, anti-traffic indirect, not by GDPR. We are now facing the challenge of abolishing another kind of servitude, the digital servitude. This is linked to your, to your mantra, where people are mined for their data and they serve back information selected by an algorithm in order to induce to behave in a way that benefits for uh, few powerful players. Frederick Douglass was a man who escaped from his uh, slave masters and became one of the most brilliant visionaries in the US history. In 1862, he delivered a lecture called The Age of Pictures about the impact of photography on society. He said, just a short quote, in every human, there are vast depths resting in unbroken silence, never yet fathomed. We feel that there is something more that the curtain has not yet been lifted. Behind this, the scene lies the immemorable unseen. So, to conclude, let us doubt the capacity for people to lift that curtain, to see what really lies behind slogans such as innovation, 
artificial intelligence, smart this, smart that, to look into the black box of algorithms to better understand the extent of positive possibilities which technology may offer in a democracy. So we should continue in such an important and informed debate about how to shape technology and its application in ways which benefits the whole for society. We are building a big data world. We are approaching the fourth industrial revolution. And I continue to say that not everything which is technologically feasible, legally feasible, is also morally tenable. This is time really now to conclude, to wish you uh, the best, particularly for those traveling uh, outside Brussels, a safe and warm journey home. Thank you once again for your participation. Shall I say see you to the 2020 edition? Okay, but the applause once again is not to me, but to the fantastic CPDP team. Thank you, Giovanni. I, he did it again. Uh, um, I want a PowerPoint. This is, uh, uh, this is us. Um, this, these are all my partners, and I like them all. And uh, every time you ask questions about them, and I, I just like my partners, and I'm very proud of them all. This is, uh, and behind this pride lies a, a perspective on uh, the vulnerability of a Herrschaftsfreie discussion, we all know the discussion, but I think as a, as a group, CPDP, uh, governed by a scientific board, held by many friends with different positions, we come very close and I challenge all the criticisms to prove that we are not getting there. So I am, I'm proud, yes. Um, these are the academic partners. Uh, there have been um, appeals to the academics today and to take up a certain role. Um, CPDP does not really believe in the academia per se. We believe in all kinds of activism. We believe in all kinds of enlightened regulators and uh, journalists and so forth. And we, that's why we are a multi-stakeholder conference. But we think academics have a role to play and one of them is being modest and supporting, um, supporting public debate and uh, making it possible and participating in it in a, in a smart way. So I, I, I'm really proud of my colleagues, and um, I'm proud because this is a landscape that needs this presence and this, and this quality insurance of the academia who have something to lose and that is their, their reputation. So uh, they do well in building an infrastructure for exchange of ideas. This is a, um, who is Dara, who is Rosamunda, that's who they are. And, and I don't, so, but that, these are the two magicians that have cooked. And I, um, I uh, come on, let's give those two, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, so luckily, they, uh, they don't want to be on stage, so that's, that explains my presence. But um, there are many more people behind this conference and I, I know that's why you're all here and keeping silent. We, we need to thank them all. There is um, Imge, Diana, Lorenzo, Julia, and if you allow me, uh, because these are the people mailing all the speakers and so forth. Um, there is Andrew, Dennis, Malavika, Ronald, Omer, Omer who couldn't be here, being generous with ideas, helping us to uh, make it every year. Istvan, Eike, Irena, Jan Cloud, you can sing those names. Sarah Deepan, who has a problem with privacy. Yong Ching, there's a <laughs> Irina, <laughs> Karen, Lord, I love these names. I love these people. And then, and then, gradually, with, with, we um, we're going from from the academics to the other people contributing to this conference, and we are starting to get to know each other really well. And I hope they don't change their minds. There are no career shifts. Uh, I'm against, keep to, keep to your trade, you're excellent, stay with us and be there again next year because I'm gonna miss you. Irina is responsible for the artistic events and we integrated them in the conference and one of the artists we worked with has, has given us this beautiful 
cover and uh, thank you Irina you have to do it all yourself but it's uh, I think most of us really are affected by this this dimension of, of aesthetics that, um, that that has to do with our concern for what is good in this society I'm gonna I'm gonna pay you an expensive dinner and then uh, our accountant who's gonna say no not an expensive dinner that's Karim and then, <laughs> And then all the people w walking around here, Laura, Camille, Els, Lauren, Sophie, and uh, no, not these people. I can't go back, excuse me. But I want to go back to them. They're the logistic team. Uh, we get this venue empty, and they make this, uh, this venue into a conference venue. And tomorrow it's an empty venue again, and there is no trace of us anymore. And that's hard, but they do it really well. And they have done it really well. I, th I have had no, no complaints at all, and I have nothing but admiration for them and, in, in, and also the uh, catering team, um, I think that that is something we can applaud for uh, th those people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I hope they come back because I like the food, I like the logistics, and we do ever better. And for those with concerns, there will be an early kitchen next year, so the food lines will even be shorter. Uh, we have solutions for all these things. They have, and uh, yeah. And then this is my uh, scientific committee. I never liked them because they're scientists like me and I respected them, so that, but I start liking them a lot. And, uh, and their remarks are very valuable. And I go from smaller details. Did you notice that the name always disappeared? Yes? We noticed too and we're academics. We don't notice these things, but we saw that. This is a privacy enhancing technology because if you put your name there, within a second it goes like this and you don't know who you're speaking to. <laughs> I hate the thing, but we all, and thanks to the science, that's what we do in the scientific committee. We laugh with these things. And next year we will improve it and you will not have any name privacy anymore, I hope. But these people are very valuable. Um, thank you for the scientific committee. Thank you for protecting us against all the uh, many bad decisions that we take and could take. Um, uh, let's give them applause too, because they're so fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> And I think I'm, I think I'm, th I'm true. Next year, we're going to move again. Um, so we did it this year after the 28th, which is World Privacy Day. And that was OK. But we're going to move back to the week before. And there are uh, calls for panels and calls for papers. And I hope you take down these things. I'm through. This is thank you. you my, my, uh, my, my main pleasure in the past three days has been walking around and seeing most panels uh, reasonably well to over, over, overloaded with people. Uh, and that is, and, and see you, seeing you all here at this moment, it has nothing to do with alcohol, I know. But uh, you're a wonderful audience, very connected. Thank you, audience. Yeah. This. And these great people, I'm, I'm, I was looking at them, and they have been lecturing with such a quality, but now we all go that side, and, uh, and we can uh, go informal. Thank you all, and see you next time.